Don't bring him here, though. Thank you. I'm not sure how easy this is going to be. Ballista Mechanism Fragment. That's how you sabotage any object whatsoever. You take a fragment out of it. Nothing like better than a fireside feast. Oh, I interrupted it. <laughs> I interrupted it. Oh, well. Hey, you got people back here. No passage. Was that where I went? No, I went in here. I kind of want to go upstairs. Did you know that? Laredo's busy with that witch, Sheila. Come back later. Geralt, let's wait downstairs in the yard. Yes? Do we wait until the Honorable Lady is done with the Venerable Hick? Waste of time. Looks like a good number of Flotsam's town watchmen are here. We should look around. Did you see that arbalist behind the house? I'll get his attention. Give him something to think about. Why don't you find out what they're guarding so closely? My apologies, gentlemen. I could not help overhearing your conversation. What do you want? In point of fact, it's a matter for the Witcher. I have an offer. An offer? Interesting. I suspect you did not come to Flotsam for pleasure alone. You suspect right. Do you know about the monster in the river? Might have heard something. I expect someone will hire you to deal with it sooner or later. Thus, I presume that... Stop presuming, expecting, and concluding. Just tell me what you want. Our honored host is in possession of part of a trap, built especially for the beast in question. Go on. Around back, there's a storage area where Laredo keeps the treasures he confiscates from merchants and travelers. There are heaps of things out there. Let me guess. You know exactly where I need to look. Precisely. I saw Laredo's men carrying the contraption across the garden in a crate. They placed it on a platform by the wall, beyond which lies the craftsman's district. Why are you telling me? Why? We need to be rid of the beast as soon as possible. Good luck. All right. I'll distract the guard. You sneak behind the house. Brilliant as ever. <laughs> Except a fireside feast with copious amounts of Wait, so... Oh, I see. <laughs> Soldier, report to me immediately. Luckily, the commandant's provided it all. Whoa, that is some Try distraction. Your got My God. So long as he can afford to... What do you want? I'll Shut it, you. soldier. Have respect for your superiors or spend the rest of your life on the king's galley. Apologies, sir. I didn't... In Flotsam, we cut the hands off thieves. I was looking for the privy. You're lucky the Commandant wants to see you. Come on! Commandant, sir. We called the witcher sneaking around the garden. Bring him in and leave. Yes, sir. We were just discussing a certain matter. You here on business too? The Commandant wanted to see me. In that case, I shall leave you to it. Finally! They didn't want to let me in while the sorceress was here. Did you see her? Made up like a whore on parade day. 
They think they can do anything, those sorceresses. I heard what happened in Tamaria. You know your name's on a warrant. It's unfortunate, though nothing that should impede our dealings. See, I'm the law round here, and the law needs to know what the legendary White Wolf's doing in this cesspit. That's no concern of yours. Listen, Witcher, here in Flotsam, everything's my plowing concern. Let me help you, Geralt. I do all right on my own. I suppose we all have our secrets. I just hope you resist questioning my authority in public again. What about Vernon Roach? Why didn't you let him in? Roach? Know the aura that surrounds him? Men like him act first and think later. And when they act, almost inevitably innocent blood flows. I trust you're on our side. Whose side is that? That of the people of Flotsam, of course. Terrorized by the elven bandits for years now. There was a time those forests belonged to the elves. To them, humans are bandits. Spare me your sympathy. The elder races, the elder language, plow it all! Today they torch human settlements, they poison our wells, and they murder us along the highways. You fail to understand. It's you who doesn't understand, Lurido. To tell you the truth, I'm not human. You an elf? A dwarf? No, talking bollocks. I piss on the fact that they call you freak for your white hair and glowing eyes. You're a human like any other. We're fighting a war. And you, my friend, cannot straddle the fence. I don't know... I don't know that Geralt... It might be like a point where, lore-wise, they say that he's human sometimes and he's non-human other times, depending on what fits the situation. But witchers and non-humans are birds of a feather, in, in a way. And uh, that's because of the, the discrimination that they suffer from humans. And obviously the history behind witchers and the history behind dwarves and the history behind elves, all of those histories are different. So the discrimination and the historical reasons for that discrimination, in a way, I say historical reasons, but really the reason is, as far as I understand it, that it's just, it really is just uh, simple racism. This is, not, this is not one of the settings, although obviously there's wars and there have always been wars. Uh, between elves and humans. Uh, it's not one of those settings that's, that says, oh, the dawn humans are discriminated against because they used to be really powerful and then killed a bunch of people when they were really powerful and now they're discriminated against because th there are some settings like that. This one this one is not like that, I don't think. Although the elves... Well, in the, well all, all races have, have a history of uh, power, but the discrimination between the common folk is really portrayed to mimic just real life racism and uh, and so if it isn't on a lore level if it isn't just about simple racism and hatred at least the, from a thematic perspective it definitely is that so the witcher definitely knows any witcher definitely knows what it is to be discriminated against and in fact the witch witchers do suffer in terms of uh, one of the reasons that the uh, Geralt moves from place to place is that he can't have, and when I say Geralt, I mean any, almost any witcher, uh, is that he can't find a, a place to, you know, just settle down and uh, and uh, spend his money. Now, Geralt has a bunch of money, because at the end of the first game, we gain a bunch of money from saving the king or whatever. Uh, it's not actually saving the princess, specifically. But, still, it's, it, it is part of the the way the witchers are characterized, is that they are vagrants and poor and just getting by and even in this game we've seen that already where the reason why Geralt asked for an advance on the payment is to pay for the potions that he's going to need to fight the, the the monster and potions aren't necessarily very expensive it's uh like he could he could ask for it more on a principle basis rather than necessarily just pay for the potions but yeah People, I mean, we've also seen the game does a very good job in showing just the kind of, the kind of discrimination that the Geralt suffers. So, yeah. What about the elves and dwarves in the trading post? The smiths, peddlers, and hunters? They eat with you, sleep among you. Whose side are they on? 
Hell if I know. That's my point, Witcher. When you fight for survival, you need to be sure who your friends are. The non-humans in Flotsam, sure, they eat, fuck, shit among us. But when Yorveth sounds the battle horns, who knows what they'll do. I'm surprised they haven't turned on you already. How so? The town guards treat non-humans like shit. Frankly, I don't know what keeps them here. I'll tell you what, Geralt. The hunger they'd face in the forest. But I grant you, those acts of uh, insubordination need to be stopped. Soldiers are simple men. When you see your mate die, a scoyatel arrow in his throat, it's hard to look favorable at the elf who sells your wife colored kerchiefs. You're a witcher. Your job is to protect the simpletons from monsters. I protect them from the danger that lurks amongst the trees. You detest non-humans. I detest Yorveth, the coward who hunts the innocent instead of facing soldiers. I detest that whore son who murders women and children while claiming that he fights for freedom. He's a monster, Geralt. He's the evil I protect people from. And anyone who helps a monster becomes a similar monster to my mind. Enough. I get it. I don't want you to kill him. Even you don't have a hope against his entire force. I have an idea, but I'd rather not go into it now. The squirrels are up to something. Every night their scouts come closer. I suspect they plan to attack the barge moored in the port. Geralt said he gets it. I, I'm Maybe he does get it, but his diversion here is... A Lorito's diversion here is weak proof against his racism. The moment he raised the question of not knowing on whose side the non-human citizens of, of Flotsam are going to stand, the moment he raised that question is the moment he just almost undeniably proves himself as mo motivated by racism. And yes, he uses Yorveth as his primary target. He, he sounded very impassionate. And honestly, I was I, I would have said the same if I were Geralt. Shut up. Enough. <laughs> That's what Geralt said. Don't keep talking, because there's arguments to be made against him, but obviously not in this dialogue system and not in this game. But no. No, he he, he definitely hates Yorveth. But and 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 for sure the hatred of Yorveth might not be fully motivated by racism, because, you know, war is like that, isn't it? But that doesn't mean he's not motivated by racism, especially when it comes to the way he treats or allows his soldiers to treat non-humans. And I say allows, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. His line about insubordination something or other was uh, was very, wasn't, wasn't very well delivered from a voice acting perspective, I feel, but from a pacing perspective, it came and went very, very fast. It was a weak, a weak defense, but I'm giving him the, 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 the benefit of the doubt that he just allows his soldiers to discriminate against non-humans. And when I say soldiers, I mean the guard or whatever, because it, the most likely scenario is that he actually partakes in that discrimination himself personally and also incentivizes that. It is most likely that that's the case, because otherwise you start to think of how exactly would he garner support and loyalty from soldiers when he obviously has it, considering he's the law around here, is a tyrant, so support is very important and loyalty and, and, and respect and fear is, is very important for that. So if you don't explicitly condone and even partake in that hatred towards non-humans, how would you get by in such a toxic force as the guard of, of, uh, of Flotsam? It raises that question, and while it is, you know, believable that, yeah, maybe, maybe he's a good guy, maybe he's the best of them all, nah, most likely he isn't. Most likely he's just saying that, especially the way he said it, but then again, as I said, it wasn't very well delivered from a voice acting perspective, I feel, that one line in particular. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's a racist, and, <laughs> and it's very obvious. What's on the barge? You mean who? Bandits, murderers, rapists, on their way to the dungeons at Drakenborg. As soon as... Their infamous leader joins them, the cherry on the cake, and Bernard Lorito's crown trophy. Couldn't have put it better myself. 
As long as Yorveth remains free, humans, elves, and dwarves will live alongside each other in deep distrust. I've got to learn what the pointy-eared rat is planning. How am I supposed to get that information? <laughs> you underestimate me, Witcher. True, I have my prejudices, but I'm not blinded by them. Take your friend Zoltan, for instance. He contacted Yorveth. How can Zoltan help if he can't go outside the walls? <laughs> step by step, Geralt. That's how you build trust. You could start by tending to a problem we have. A beast. The Cairn has blocked all boat traffic. I'm losing tolls. But that is, um, the trading post is losing revenue. Kill the Cairn and I'll declare your friends acquitted of their crimes. Then Zoltan can take you to see Yorveth. I'm a witcher. I don't work for free. Of course you don't. Help us capture the Scoyatel commander and you'll be rewarded generously. Straight from the trading post's treasury. I came and heard you out. Now I've heard enough. You're refusing to help? You're vile, Lorito. I hope you and Yorvith face each other someday. And may the best rat win. You'll regret those words, Witcher. I promise you that. Now get out of my sight. There's a lot of regret in his last lines of dialogue. <laughs> Just like, you'll regret that. You'll regret that. It, well... Because considering that is the second time he says that, the other time I I fought against him or sort of lost him a bunch of money. Um, he also said that. I get the impression that's a little bit of projection. He's the one that regrets <laughs> putting trust in me or something. I don't know. There's a blackjack here. So this is Lorito. I wonder if I can talk to him a little bit more. That's a lovely place. It's a it's a really really lovely place. You know, as a personal room. Who is this person, though? Oh, it's the the other guy that talked to me, right? Lorito. Get out of my sight! Copy that. Anyway, I came here because... I know there were places for us to visit. Let's go upstairs. Oh, hi. Entry only on the Commandant's Express orders. Off you go. Hmm. Okay, they could have hidden some Easter egg in there, maybe. But they didn't. Oh! Hi, excuse me. That's the top floor. No passage. And that's the bottom floor. So, ha excuse me, Geralt, get, get outside. The camera rotating is, is a bit disorienting. So how did they expect me... How was I supposed to get up there? I don't think I saw what they were guarding. But I do know that I can go in here. Nope, I could go in there. That's where we went for the punching. But not anymore. Roach. Turned me away at the door, the bastard. Yep. We'll meet later. Don't forget your weapons on the way out. Right, good call. Indecent proposal was the name of the of the quest. Very straightforward in that regard, wasn't it? Well, it's night time again. Let's continue with the side quests. I need to find Sendler. Hmm. I wonder if he's in the tavern. I tell him, I'm taking your pouch. Or Commandant Laredo sends his regards, punk. Does he now? Well, his regards are very ugly. I think it's my scimitar that makes them... that makes them all green. A wire rope. Well, ugly and pathetic. Oh, they're not here. They're outside. Right there. I think that's the other town. The non-human town. This one. Take care of yourself. Hello. I do indeed. This place is spooky as hell. Chickens. 
Also, the soundtrack doesn't help. Let's beeline towards towards where we're supposed to go. So when will you tackle the old man? Me? A fine kettle of fish. Hmm, I don't know that they're all non-humans. It's here. Huh. Well, let me take all of your stuff. That is a sound that people make when they're trying to sleep. This guy had pelts outside, didn't he? Excellent work. In it? The finest hides and the tannins on half either. A straggler, yeah? A lobber there? Sometimes a hapless calf. I've even got otter fur for you. You hunt? Oh, we must not hunt in the royal forest. Even children know that. Besides, it's too dangerous to go among the trees now. What with all those monsters? They must be finding more food in the area. A war's brewing, methinks. Not necessarily. The Scoia'tael attack merchants and ambush patrols. Ideal conditions for necrophages. We ought to wait for better times and be satisfied with the little things, like the good book teaches us. The good book teaches us that? I'd like to play dice. Shall we play now? Yes, we shall. And I will win. Or I will lose. I don't know. As long as I don't lose my dice, that's all that matters. We have... Not bad. Two pairs. Bet. And he has just one pair. Opponent is raised. And there it goes. 33% chance that I... Oh, Ooh, he lost dice. I won. That's not very common that they lose dice. You're good. Here's your coin. I heard you deal in traps. Indeed. Though that's not all I deal in. I don't want coin. I want something else. Suit yourself. Choose. I need the design for the scorpion's death. It's a kind of trap. I know what it is. Dumb name, but that is what everyone calls it. It works on Neckers and Endrigas. And that's good enough for me. Oh, that's really sweet, actually. I didn't know it was that. And this guy also has this inside. It's just things. And that is the Boker face quest completed, at least for his face. Because I think there might be others. It's for arm wrestling. Where does it lead me? It's actually out here. I wonder if there's another one. No, no, no. It's just this one. Excuse me, I'm here to crush your arm muscles and steal from you. Don't mind me. Actually, I might not be able to steal from you because, nope, I have a little bit of timber and I will take all the timber in the game. This is not the best time. I'll come back later. Hmm. It does make sense that it isn't. Ah, oh, my damn sacrum. Aching and thumping. I... I'm not sure I know what a sacrum is. It might be... Her butt. Either way, we need to wait until daytime. Let's go up until then. And... Th that is a sound. Praise the gods. Where were they? It's just people are going in. There you are. What do you want? I heard you're the local arm wrestling champ. You bet I am. I'd like to change that. Many tried and walked away with shit in their britches. You want to go? You bet I do. All right, come with me. Let's do it now. I'll be tied up later. All right. Ready? Let's do it. All of the money. I fear nothing. It's actually really very simple with a mouse. I don't think this game was designed for mouse and keyboard. <laughs> Strong as an ox. Here are your orange. Once we had a company of Adam Pangrat's mercenaries here. 
I'm the strongest here, so I took honoured you. But that lad's got superhuman strength. He beat me like a child. If you ever see him, tell him Bard Bargy drinks to his health. All right. Bard... Bad Bargy? I don't know. I suppose that makes sense for a name. That's that. And then we have the Troll Trouble. The Andrega Contract. The Necker Contract. And In the Claws of Madness. It's about the ghost house. Or hospital. Or asylum. I believe hospital is not the word at all. But uh, let's let's focus on the Neckers. I think that's going to be an easy one, isn't it? It's just Neckers. And now that we have a, a, a Silver Sword. And we have potentially traps that can be used against Neckers. We can do it. However, I don't know where to go. It doesn't show over here. Or on the minimap. Hmm. Veopatis. A forgotten god. Veopat is a forgotten god of the Pontar Valley, still worshipped in certain forest settlements, but the times of his greatness and popularity are long gone. A few priestesses and witches make offerings to him, yet no common folk wish to take part in their rites. In the era of human colonization, Veopatis was a guardian god, often associated with rivers from which humans drew benefit. He guarded people from the dangers of the forest. Poles bearing his likeness marked the borders between areas that had been tamed and those that had remained wild and dangerous. Veopatis gave people fish, made sailing easier, and his name was used to ward beasts off. Yet, he remained petulant and fierce. In these times, if those wandering through the woods come across some stone symbols with gaping jaws, they believe them to be the likeness of fierce monsters rather than statues commemorating a once-loved deity. I wonder if this has anything to do with the Vodianoi, I think it is, that existed in the first game. Why is there a crow inside your house? That's weird. 